Well, welcome to our very first video podcast. We've been talking a long time about doing this. We're going to call this Storm FC TV. And as you can see, I've got a guest here today. Um, so let's just begin with why are we doing a video podcast? Well, um, we feel that a good way of trying to get some information and stuff that's going on throughout the club, even coaching points, um, questions and answers, we can help with all of those through a weekly podcast. Not only that, and of course, Hector will come into this in just a second, but we'll also look into one of our new projects and, and even have players come in and interview players and, and uh, do a lot of fun things with that. So oh, we're aiming to do this once a week, of course. However, um, we all have families and of course I'm on the field pretty much seven days out of the week. So uh, we're going to aim to do this once a week. They're not going to be too long, just enough to to uh, at least get some information out about things that are going on for the week, including other teams that are out and about, other coaches that will come in, etc. So if you want to see these uh, podcasts, the best way to see them, obviously, is going to be through our YouTube. We're going to get some links coming through to our Facebook. Um, so the YouTube account will be Storm Football. Uh, one of our board members, Blaze Thorpe, will be helping us with that. Um, we'll also be linking it to the Facebook page. So if you haven't liked the Facebook page, and you're only watching this on YouTube currently, then you need to go and like our Facebook page, and we'll put that down in the comments down below. And then, of course, at our website, we'll, um, we'll also put on stormfootball.com. Uh, we'll, we'll set up a dedicated media page on there, so you can also see that. So, so there you have it. That's why we're doing the, the first of the podcast series. And hopefully, if you like it, comment down below. What, what would you like to see? What would you like us to talk about? What questions and things would you like to know? So leave some comments down below. Um, and ask us, hey, get some questions or what would you like to see within the club? So, so we're gonna move on. So the first things for those that are new, if you're watching this, um, this, is a, this is about Storm Football Club, Kerno Storm Football Club. The word Kerno comes from where I'm from, Cornwall. Um, it means Cornish in, the, in, uh, in our language. So when I came over here way back when in 2000, the early 2000s, um, and I was asked to start a club up, what better than to call it the Cornish Storm? So that's what we did. Um, so we're, we're a storm, um, we started in the United States, in Texas in 2004. We're now onto our 15th anniversary. 2019 is, uh, well especially 2019 and, and 20 season, that will be our 15th anniversary season. Our actual birthday is gonna be in May when we have our banquet. So some fun stuff that we're trying to do new um, this year that I think, or well, we hope that will be good for you guys to watch. Um, so where are we now? So we've come from three teams way back when to now we've got our elite side, our City FC um, group. We have Funder Minis, which Coach Erica does a great job with, from 18 months old to the EDP program, our early development program, which is which they're in um, four to six year olds, through to our academy. And we have a lot of uh, academy coaches, very good coaches here, all professional coaches. And then into our um, competitive U11 and upwards. So this year we're, we're gonna hold on to the academy up to U11 as well for some players that need a little bit extra on the development, rather than going back into the rec side. So. So we've, we've picked up a lot of teams, we've become more of a community club, and that's really where our aim's about to be. We want to be a community club. We want to make sure that by the time I've left the club and gone, and we've got people like Hector here, that we're ex-players moving on through, that they can take it on further, that coaches in and around the community can feel they can be a part of it and come on in and, and just be a part of the process in helping the, the kids in this program to, to move to the next level. So that really moves us on to what our mission statement is, and. Um, what we're trying to do. So we uh, have sustainable values, some of our core uh, sustainable values, including risk aversion, communication, leadership, um, just to name a few, we're faith-based as well. So they are core elements that we put into our teams, both in practice, before games, after games, during games, ethically, the way we can uh, interact with some of our younger kids as well as up through to the adults. And even when you get to hear us talk about the men's program as well, we still expect the same type of commitment and, uh, and values there. So sometimes, as we'll talk about in a second, some new players coming in that, hasn't come, that haven't come through our program is a bit new to them, but they'll do fine with, uh, with, with how we're, we're doing things. So That brings us to the, the uh, player development pathway. This is something that we've been working on, in particular myself, we've been working on now for over, um, well, probably the 15 years, and it's really come to fruition in the last 18 months, two years, and really what we're going to talk about today in today's podcast, our number one podcast, is going to be the United Premier Soccer League, which is for those players that are gone past the high school um, age group when they graduate high school. So during our program, from 18 months old to seniors, while they graduate into 
into either college or into the wide world, into the working environment. Um, what we have is different programs within the pathway for each player to be able to get to where they want to be. If they want to go to the elite side, we have programs for that with the National Premier League, the Y League, um, that looks like we'll also be bringing into the UPSL for a spring league as well for youth. And then we also have uh, development programs, we have uh, early development programs, we have programs that are outside of, <coughs> excuse me, outside of our, um, um, outside of the training, if you like, um, that will help us to, to move along. So really, there's, I'll put up a, a bit more about our uh, player development program. I'll probably add in, Dan, especially in the Facebook and the comments, I'll add in um, our graphic on that. If you have any questions on that, again, comment below and ask, ask, um, ask us about it. Um, we're more than happy to let people know and, and uh, how it helps our kids. So without further ado, this is Hector Ponce, who's sitting next to me. Uh, now, Hector, um, why don't you tell him, Hector, when did you first get to know about our club? Uh, let's see, through one of my good friends of mine, we were in school, chatting it up, and he said, hey, you're a pretty good soccer player. Would you want to come and play for my team? Came out to try out, I think it was the fall of 2009 or 8 uh, one of the two years too far back now and that's where the journey started with Storm um, haven't looked back since so so just to elaborate on that Hector was part and parcel back in the day uh, we had a 2000 uh, sorry a 1995 boys team in fact we had two 95 boys teams I think first Hector was on the Millennium team no not West, the team. West, West team the West, West yeah, team yeah. Um, and then as the team um, moved on up through the age brackets, I think that was U14 maybe back then. Around was, there. Yeah, about U14. Um, he came on board on the on the uh, Penna team, the, the 95 Boys Penna team. They went end up going to Colorado with the San State Diego. Games America, America. They won at uh, San Diego. They went to Pennsylvania. You name it, the 95 Boys have pretty much... They were the, the first team and successful team within the club. And many of them have gone on to, to become great players, great uh, community leaders as well out there. Some of them are dads now and have their own their own kids. So Hector was part and parcel of that program. So when we had a conversation about an opportunity to join the United Premier Soccer League, which is for 16-year-olds and up, um, that play in the professional development kind of league, um, there was nobody better than than Hector. Hector had left the program. When you left when you left the program as a player, you went to where? Uh, for school or for, for college? For college, I went to the University of North Texas. And what do you do there? I uh, studied kinesiology. Yeah. Kinesiology. So you can tell yeah. you how to walk, okay? <laughs> Properly. <Yeah. laughs> um, and then what did you do from there? Did you, you uh, came back to the club? and? I think it, I took about one year hiatus so back in 2013 of anything soccer related. Uh, but then I, was, I got the urge to be back involved. And uh, really, I started uh, getting my licenses came back thankfully to you uh gave me opportunity with a, a, one of the teams started coaching there did a little bit of the odp side uh, and helped out the unt uh, men's club team and uh, just been building it up from there so he's he's been doing his licensing which exactly according to our player development program for those players that have moved out of our program retention they come back into our system so hector is a testament to that so um i started talking to hector maybe back in uh, october yeah, last year, November, start getting some uh, phone calls from the UPSL, the the ownership in the UPSL, to see if I would be willing to bring in our organisation and offer some opportunities for players of a little bit older, the you know those kids that have uh, moved on from our program and gone into college or gone into work environment to be able to play again. So I talked it over with Hector a little bit. He was certainly intrigued. Um, what was your thoughts about it at first? Um, honestly, that was. I thought I think that was something that was in our mind from the get go, from the beginning. With our ninety five boys, uh, we're like we need something else, else afterwards. Where many of us don't probably have the funds to go to college, and uh, we still wanted to play competitively, organized soccer, and it's it wasn't here at that time. So it was in the back of our minds from back then. We even tried to organize something like that with the alumni players, and but again, it was just it, it didn't happen at that time, and like, thankfully this opportunity came about and I was like, yes, this is exactly what we were looking for. And then I know college teammates, friends, and then friends from other schools that were looking for the same type of thing. Okay, so so it took a little bit more convincing for myself. Uh, we didn't actually, 
jump on board until December with with ultra committing, and that was because of the the cost that could be involved with it. But talking to a lot of the boys since which that have come and tried out, we had over 60, 60, 50, 60, 60. 50 or 60 coming to tryouts, register for tryouts, which is amazing. Um, but for us, again, once once our kids, we felt in our, in our program, once those players have hit high school and graduated, we had nothing else for them. And, and really, there's a lot of players, as Hector said, that still needed something. And, and I think this has brought that together. So roll on now. We are now in the United Premier Soccer League. There is um, six, no, nope, there's seven teams. Active teams. There's seven ten. active teams. We're in the top division. We're in the, the Premier Pro. In fact, we're in with one of the teams that went all the way to the uh, nice. to the national finals a couple of weeks back. They yeah. lost on penalties, so unfortunate for them. But it was great for them to, um, you know, support Te- or for us to support Texas with them. So good job to, in a sense, on that one. Um, and they are actually going to be our very first game. <laughs> so we're certainly going to learn a lot about ourselves when it comes to that first game. And there'll be plenty more podcasts leading up to that game, which actually is March the 30th. It's going to be away, so we, we've got our first two games away. But let's come back a little bit. So we, we roll on to leading up to our um, tryouts. Yeah. So what concerns, what thoughts did you have leading, before we even hit our first tryouts, what were you thinking? I know what I was thinking, what were you thinking? <laughs> um, for me, it was definitely time constraint. Uh, I, I was like, back in October when we first discussed it, I'm like, we had opportunity and time to organize it. And then it kind of just like died down for a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe we're shelving it for next year. Um, yeah, but once next year arrived, I really didn't think it was gonna be like, oh, we're doing it, let's go get it. And then uh, once we got it, what, when did we start planning? Uh, January, mid-January? I'd like to say earlier, but I think it was January. <laughs> it was like mid-January. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It's and January. within two weeks, we were already hosting our first tryouts, and uh, we were talking. Well, let me hold you back there. Okay, so go for it. My worry: two kids showing up. That's what my oh, worry I was. was. <laughs> I was going to that next part. I was really going to that next point where um, we had this whole registration thing online, where you could sign up, easy, right? You think people would just go click, sign up? I think three days beforehand, I'm texting all my friends. <laughs> Have y'all signed up yet? Oh, I'm texting all my... What he did also say is, prior to him texting, he's got me on the phone to him (laughs) daily saying, dude, there's only three people signed up. I even got uh, other friends from UNT to post on their social media to get players to come in. And like, we only had like, what, three or four players sign up prior to tryouts. And uh, it was kind of worrying. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I think we have a whole field rented out, which takes time and money to do. And uh, only have seven players show up, but thankfully we had um, uh, 30, 35. Gosh, on the first, yeah, the, on the first tryout day, which was held in Duncanville, we had over 30. I think we had yeah. something like 35, 36 players coming. So then it created a whole new type of issue, and uh, we, had, we had to figure out, hey, we've got a smaller space to, to do the tryouts in. How are we going to do best the tryouts? But you know what? That's, a better, that's better to be in than, than anything else. And on top of that, of course, on the first tryout, You'll be seeing, um, it might, I'm hoping it will go out before this one does, but um, it might be simultaneous. we are also had a production crew in there taking drone shots, taking footage, taking mobile footage. Uh, I had a production guy in there that's now doing a documentary for us that we hope will be a weekly also um, upload, which will give a bit more uh, behind the scenes of the players, introducing the players. You'll get to know them a bit more. The trials and tribulations, the... The nerves, the everything you want, the talking, just the, the the general behind the scenes of what it takes to try and put this thing together. Because you know, for for me to document something, it's you have this one time. This is our inaugural season for men's one time. So if it's going to be that one time, do yeah, you need right. to do it right the you first time. Right. So I'm not saying we're amateurs at this. So I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not saying our documentary is going to be perfect. <laughs> and we actually we got one of Hector's friends doing that as well, and that's that's helping him to learn. And to, for him to to gain some more experience. So, again, let us know what you think about that. We'll, we'll let you know on when that comes out on the Facebook and the YouTube. But so so that was the the first one. After the end of the first one, um, I thought we were pretty good. So we're we're going to talk a little bit about the coach staffs. We have Coach Hector is the head coach. Um, he's the head coach. He has two assistants, uh, uh, Robbie Malloy and Sergio Garcia. Uh, two very experienced men, gentlemen that have uh, proven their worth here at the. Uh, club level on the youth side and so I'm glad that they're along they're definitely somebody you can lean on with 
and they and they both have um, you know coach Robbie's been with us yeah. gosh as long as it feels like as long as I've been here so <laughs> Haley Haley is just as much a part of the club as anybody else his daughter um, he has moved now down to Austin so he's had to he's had to rearrange his time slots with some of his for some of his teams now but um, being able to come up on a Thursday and help with the uh, with the coaching side of things is, is fantastic and then Sergio Sergio has been um, he lives in Grand Prairie he has been a part and parcel of our City FC group um, within the National Premier League and Super Y thoroughly enjoyed it there and I think this was his next step as well really to to be a part and parcel of the, the professional development group so yeah. we're super I'm super happy I think the club is super happy to have the type of people that we have involved now on the back side of things we also have uh, Chris Lopez um, Blaze Thorpe uh, to and Casey of course Casey here in the office she takes care of the registration stuff but um, Chris and Blaze are, are both behind the scenes match day game day paperwork all the fun stuff they get to do and we'll get them on camera as we're leading into <laughs> uh, into the into the first game but and then um, I'm going to be helping as much as I can but of course I'm, I'm coaching a lot on the youth side in the academy on Sunday so I can only be there as much as I can possibly be but um, mm -hmm. so we've had three four we've had four um, triumphs. triumphs yeah we have four triumphs. total over about 60 people 60 players coming in um, so that came to ahead and much um, debate with the coaching staff on who we're going to cut unfortunately we hate that word cut that's just something that's part and parcel of it we're in allowed 18 game day and we were trying to trim 60 old players right down to at least about 30 so talk to us a little bit about what you went through and what you were thinking when you came to the cuts um yeah no uh the the biggest thing is really trying to find a cohesive unit of Talented players, yes, but players that can really m mesh well. They can really connect with each other. Um, because if I have uh, a Cristiano Ronaldo on the field, but he doesn't play for the teammate, uh, is he really worth to the team as much as he? If, unless he's scoring Cristiano Ronaldo numbers, he's not gonna be worth to the team as much as somebody else. And I'd rather. Uh, I, in my view, I'd rather pick somebody that is going to help for the team and push the team further than uh, an, an individual that's talented or so forth, uh, no matter how they see themselves. Um, but coming down to the day of cutting, uh, it, it was a decision-making. I think we had overall center mid position was like our most uh, in-depth position, and there, everybody wants to be a center mid apparently. <laughs> and we had like 12 or 13, and we had to bring it down to seven, six. Six center mids, and then from there, even then, we we trimmed it down to a thirty-man squad with two homegrown players, and um, we have to trim it down on a game day to eighteen. So, yes, I might have selected six center mids, but maybe only three or four are going to be on the roster. Right. And so, um, they had to battle it out. See who's uh, who earns that spot. Well, good, and that and that's what we wanted. We wanted to make sure that we were going to be as competitive as possible, and that yeah. we were able to pick, or you were able to pick the players that fitted into whatever system you want, or the or the type of player that you wanted in there. Mm -hmm. So Hector touched a little bit about the homegrown players, and actually we're going to change the name of that somewhat because I think we have homegrown players within, as Hector talked to me before. So our academy grown players, we're going to have two players on the roster, no matter how many try out, but two that are currently also in our youth program. So tell us a little bit about the players that got selected this year. Yeah, uh, we have uh, David and Garrett. Um, so that's David, Laura. David, Laura and Garrett. Um, Garvin. Uh, Garvin, Garvin. I'm yeah. Just, yeah GG. Yeah, I was saying GG. Mm -hmm. uh, little con uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. That's there who you I, go. I, I yeah. compared Garrett to. Uh, they're both young and uh, they have this tenacity about them that allows them to play against much older players. Uh, again, we have, I think in the average age right now is 22 at our, 20, 21, 22. And I think our highest player is about 26, 27. Yeah. The 95, like Edgar and, and Joel, who's on the 94, yeah. and Joe Cavalero, I think they're... Even a couple older, to 27, yeah. 28. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we've got a good mixture there. Um, and, uh, but these guys are 16, 17, 18, 17, yeah. 18, right? So these two boys actually play for our 01 boys pan team. They play classic, they play NPL, they also do the Super Y. Um, yeah, they're they're on O one boys. They're juniors currently, in, in high so school. they still got another year in high school. Yep. So um, this is definitely going to give them an opportunity to uh, 
feel what a difference uh, from high school to competitive club and now playing on uh, the UPSL men's team uh, and seeing what the what is needed to develop. Maybe they didn't see it in high school or club. They're like, maybe I need to be more strong or more uh, careful and realizing my positioning or how I move my body. Um, and maybe I can utilize this against other players that aren't used to this. And so hopefully they are picking up little things from the older and more experienced players. Um, but I definitely think this is a great opportunity for them. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a great opportunity for them. And, and again, one of our key things that we want to do with this program is make sure that there can be seen a clear pathway through. And those two, those two certainly will, will add that to the, to the roster. Now, on game day, only 18 can be listed. So from 30 down to 18, there's still a lot to go. Oh, yeah. What's, um, what do you think, um, and, and this is just a projection, what do you think over the next, what, where our first game is March the 30th? And we're today, February, what, the 17th, something like that? 19th, and 19th. Yeah. So what do you see from now to the first game? What do you see as our advantages, our disadvantages, as, as our hurdles, as our excitement? What do you see? Um, disadvantages, uh, I'll start off with that just because time. Um, I think uh, all the other teams have had at least one season of experience or if not, they've already an organized team beforehand. We're a completely new team. And so um, time to get the team together and be uh, a, a unit. Um, because we have some really talented players, but at the moment we're not the current uh, wavelength, the same wavelength uh, that I would like for everybody to be at. Um, and so I think the biggest weakness is time. Uh, but we do have some players that have they played uh, UPSL level and they've already been communicating with their teammates, hey, they're going to be coming in a lot more harder than you think. Don't take this lightly. Yeah, it's a much... So they've already been telling them and giving them little t uh, tips of knowledge of how to prepare for a UPSL season. Um, an, uh, another one would be location to an extent. We are community-based, and I love that about Storm. Uh, but we also have players that are in either college, uh, coming from... A, hour to an hour and a half so away. just as uh, Gainesville yeah, one, right? yeah so we I have mean, a couple kids from, a Gainesville. Player from Gainesville coming just to practice and to play for us yeah and so so I understand if sometimes it, it might not be possible to get the whole group at training and that's a weakness on my view because you want to have everybody involved uh, to build that camaraderie and to build on your team and to be able to develop that uh, for the future um, so that those are the two biggest weaknesses I think we see at the moment uh, strengths I think organization behind us is a definite big thing because I've also already heard about other UPSL teams that don't have a backing like we do, and it's hard to continue. It, a lot of stuff, they don't have the support, they don't know who to ask, they don't know what to do, and it takes a team. It takes a team. It takes an effort, a team effort to grow uh, this single team. Uh, what's that saying? It takes a village to grow uh, to, I don't, know what I don't know what you're talking about, man. But it's, no, no, it, it takes a village. <laughs> it takes an army it, it, to create. Yeah. Uh, it takes a village or something like that. Yeah. That's what the saying is. I don't know, but um, that's that's really the biggest thing. Uh, the, our biggest strength is that we have the backing and support of a great club like Storm. Good. Now um, we don't. These video podcasts aren't going to be that long. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to make sure. Also, we're going to be doing a couple of things. We didn't talk too much about all of the players that are going to be on the thirty man yet or thirty two man roster. We're going to start putting out um, some player reveals. Uh, I'm going to get some graphics out and put those out in the oncoming weeks. Really, um, we'll get the we'll get the documentary out. Look for part two coming up quite soon. We'll get a couple of finishing touches put to, onto the onto the documentary before we send that out. Um, but come and be a part of it. Um, this is, is really going to be exciting. I, if this works out for the men's and we can make it break even, we can get people to come and watch. And, and really, c come game day, it's going to be more about entertainment. We want to make sure people are going to come and ha be entertained and have, have our players come and be involved and be part and parcel of it and not just sit in the seats and just watch. We want them to be there at half time. We want them to be ball boys. We want them to walk out with the players. We want them to, to meet and greet and, and autographs and, and just be part and parcel of another extended team, which is what they are within our club. So look out for the, um, for the graphics giving out who the players are. I will tell you there is players from our past 99 boys, from our 95 boys, from our 94 boys. There's players from... 
sixes, I think. Yeah, nice sixes. Um, so there's players that have played for us throughout the years, and there are absolutely new players that have come in that have never played for us who know us, and actually some one of them, um, their their dad actually coaches against us quite regularly. So <laughs> um, with another club, so there is a lot of people in there, and it really is truly something for the community. We have got a stadium. We will also be revealing that in the next couple of graphics, and we will be putting out our pre-season schedule that we've put together. So not long to go, four weeks before, or five, six weeks, six weeks before our first game, March the 30th, which is away. Our first home game will be April the 13th, um, Saturday night, April 13th, and we'll put out everything you need to know about that. So if you're interested in getting some tickets, we've got some real good specials going on right now. Um, if you want to walk out, your team wants to walk out with um, the team, or if they want to be ball boys, we've got special tickets, prices there. They'll be released in the next five to six days as well. So. Thank you very much. We are just amateurs. It's the first time we've ever done this, so we'll probably look at it. I've probably forgotten to record somewhere along the line. I have like numerous cameras here, hoping we either catch audio or video, <laughs> and I'm hoping it's gonna work. So if you guys like it, let us know. Talk to us, comment um, what you wanna hear about, what do you want us to, to talk about, what questions you have for us, what would you like to see when we come up, especially UPSL games, or maybe tournaments coming up, do we wanna get some um, players in, some parents and stuff like that to talk. So just let us know. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Remember to comment in below. Peace out. <laughs>